Hi, I'm Sarah, one of the ministers at Meeting House Church. Tonight, as we gather for our Ash Wednesday service, you'll note that my surroundings are a little bit different. That's because we made a decision on Tuesday to switch our service to being virtual only. That way, all of us can stay safe and warm indoors. So on behalf of the whole Meeting House community, I welcome you to this call to Lenten observance this Ash Wednesday. Lent is the time in which we as a people are called to return and to remember and to repent. It's acknowledgement as this winter season is reminding us that we are vulnerable, we are human, and we are held in the hands of a loving creator. So might you take this night as that opportunity to begin over these 40 days to return, to remember, to repent, to recenter yourself in the love of the God that we know in Jesus. As we walk this way, as Jesus himself, we are told, spent those 40 days in the wilderness fasting and praying, and as the Israelite people for 40 years journeyed through the wilderness, this movement is one from slavery into freedom, from the places of bondage to the places of life. Might you then this night, as we celebrate and remember that though we are from ash and to ash we shall return, we are beloved created ones of a loving, loving God. Follow this way and may you find anew the life that is yours in Jesus as we journey the way of the cross. Welcome to Ash Wednesday. May the love of God go with us all. The glory of these forty days we celebrate with songs of praise for Christ by whom all things were made himself has fasted and has prayed. Alone and fasting, Moses saw the loving God who gave the law, and to Elijah fasting came the steeds and chariots of flame. So Daniel trained his mystic sight, delivered from the lion's might, and John the bridegroom's friend became the herald of Messiah's name. Then grant that we, like them, be true, consumed in fast and prayer with you, our spirit strengthen with your grace, and give us joy to see your face. Our scripture reading for this Ash Wednesday is from Philippians 2, 1 through 11. If then there is any comfort in Christ, any consolation from love, any partnership in the Spirit, any tender affection and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he existed in the form of God, 
did not regard, regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, assuming human likeness, and being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name given to Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thank you, Mark, for reading that scripture. Before I share a, a few thoughts as we begin our journey of Lent this Ash Wednesday, I just want to say how much we wish we could be together. Some of you only join us virtually, and we're glad that you're a part of our worship and part of our church. But many of us would be here in person, but again, <laughs> because of the snow, we are not. But that doesn't mean that we can't begin this journey together. It doesn't mean that we won't be together as God leads us through Lent and as we get to that grand day of Easter, recognizing the hope that we have in Jesus. Let's pray. God, we're grateful we are that we can be together, that we have the technology to bring us together. Grateful that we can be together in mind and spirit and very soul. Grateful that you join us together by the power of your spirit. So we invite you now to speak to us as we begin these next 40 days, as we journey towards the cross, the empty tomb, and the resurrected Savior, Jesus, you. We pray things in your name. Amen. And so in our passage for tonight that Mark just read, Paul reminds us of Jesus' example as he lived among us. Jesus came as a servant, not seeking his own good, but the good of others. Jesus was led by his desire to be humble first, to lead with humility, to show us what it means to live in a way that helps others to flourish around us. How does that measure up with the examples of the world? Not, not so well. The world would say, get what's yours. Get what's yours. Get what you deserve. Get all that you can get. But Jesus' message is, let's make sure others are getting what they need. And then we'll get plenty for ourselves as well. We recognize examples of humility when we see them and hear them, don't we? Because they tend to look and feel and sound so countercultural. Ash Wednesday, and through the Lenten season, we have the opportunity, as we will, to restart, to refocus, and rethink how we show up in this world as we seek, as Jesus' followers, to follow Jesus' example. Nicholas Copernicus was a Polish astronomer in the 16th century. He was the first person to propose that the earth is not the center of the universe. We are, he said, a solar system, not a Terra system, our planet is but one of many revolving around the sun. This was an outrageous proposition to the people of his day. It hadn't been all that long since he offered this message that they needed to give up their belief about the flat earth and begin to understand better what it meant that this earth might be round. An idea that Columbus suggested. And now this astronomer actually had the courage to propose that everything didn't revolve around us. Copernicus' views caused a tremendous uproar. His theory was downright heretical in some people's minds. But with time, 
people began to recognize its simplicity and beauty. They began to believe, they began to admit that he probably was right. And we're still trying to get that, aren't we? Hundreds of years later. We're still trying to understand that we're not the center. Not the center of the universe. Not the center of everything. Everything doesn't revolve around us. The earth is one of nine planets. It partakes in a perpetual and graceful dance. Actually, the earth spins round and round its axis and at the same time around the sun. But Copernicus was just the beginning. With the creation of stronger telescopes, we discovered our place within the Milky Way. We came to see that our solar system is but a mere dot in our galaxy. And our sun, just one of the dimmer bulbs among the 200 billion stars in our galactical home. It's tiny beside some of the huge suns in other places of our galaxy. And then with the advent of even more powerful telescopes, we've come to realize that our seemingly huge galaxy, 90,000 light years in diameter, is but one of billions of such galaxies. With every advance in technology, our place in the universe grows smaller and smaller and smaller. So what can we learn from this astronomy lesson this Lent? Lent, my friends, Lent is all about discipleship. And a disciple is a student. The root word disciple literally means learner. A student isn't the source of wisdom because part of being a student, <laughs> a disciple, is to admit, hey, I don't know. There's a lot I must learn. And so I look to a teacher for wisdom and understanding. True disciples admit that they don't know what they lack. Because if we had all the answers inside of us, we wouldn't have to look outside of ourselves, would we? But we do. We don't have all the answers. And we have to accept the realization that not a day, not a minute goes by when we are self-sufficient. We need the farmers to grow the crops. We need the XL energies to provide us with electricity. We need the sun to warm our earth, the ozone layer to protect us. We need the trees to supply oxygen and the ice caps to maintain our delicate balance. We need family and friends to love us and we need neighbors to whom we can share our love as well. We need doctors to care for us and national leaders to protect us and be our advocates. And most of all, most of all, we need God. We need God. That's why Ash Wednesday is so important. Without God, we are just dust and we're just returning to dust. It's God that gives all that time in between and then into eternity meaning and purpose and offers it hope. But it's so easy for us to just leave God out of the equation of our lives. We go about our business and we make our plans, but all these plans would collapse if God didn't give us our daily life. Day after day after day. It's God that provides us life. Yes, today is Ash Wednesday. And this day of all days acts as an opportunity for us to examine what it means to be a disciple. To examine our own discipleship. Our own following of Jesus. It's on Ash Wednesday we come face to face with who we are and decide what we want to become. We receive a smudge of ash on our foreheads. We hear the accompanying words, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. They remind us 
just how fleeting our existence is. So we must confess that we are not the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega, the source and the ending. We are created, not the creator. And so that little smudge of ash can drive us to look for the one who is the source if we would but look. Drive us to the source, drive us to the beginning, drive us to the source of life, of purpose and hope. To look to the one who gives us all things. It's in these moments, like Ash Wednesday, that we become disciples again. We get back on the journey if we've fallen off. We join the journey if we've never begun. And we then look to Jesus to lead us as God through Jesus and the work of God's spirit works towards bringing us on to completion, finishing the work that began at our birth. At first though, that little smudge of ash on our forehead may seem a little bit outdated. It might seem like an embarrassing remnant from the medieval church, but it, but it actually is doing something that becomes a big deal if we let it. It's, it's actually doing us a huge favor, this smudge on our forehead, this practice of Ash Wednesday. For until we realize what we are not, that we are not the center of the universe, we won't recognize the one who is. This is the gift of the ashes. What a relief it is to know that it isn't you or I holding things together. It's not up to you and I to keep everything in the universe spinning in perfect, perfect concert. There's another. There is the true center. God. The God of the universe. The God of creation. Who longs for a relationship with you and I. That calls us to that that radical discipleship that Jesus showed us how to do. Yes, that little smudge of ash is your invitation to enter again true life. It invites us to enter our intended place with God at the center and the source of life. This Lenten season, let us as a church and, and individual followers of Jesus heed the Apostle Paul's plea that we've already heard today. If then there is any comfort in Christ, any consolation from love, any partnership in the Spirit, any tender affection and sympathy, well, then make my joy complete. How? By being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. What's that mean? To do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but in humility. Regard others as better than ourselves. Paul goes on to say, let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others first. And then let the mind, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Yes, friends, as we begin these 40 days of Lent, let's look to Jesus who has showed us the way showed us to a way to a greater understanding of our relationship with God. That relationship built on a humble heart, seeking to learn to grow. So my friends, as we give up something this Lenten journey to create more space for God, as we, as we pray and ask God to lead us and guide us, and as we express our humility and express our love for another by offering gifts to those in need, we're on the journey together. Bless you on this Lenten journey that you do and we do together. Amen. Oh. Feet 
while I run this race. Guide my feet while I run this race. Guide my feet while I run this race. For I don't want to run this race in vain. Hold my hand while I run this race. Hold my hand while I run this race. Hold my hand while I run this race. For I don't want to run this race in vain. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Oh Lord, search my heart while I run this race. Search my heart while I run this race. Search my heart while I run this race. No, I don't want to run this race in vain. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I guide my feet while I run this race. With your help, Lord, I'll run this race. With you. Forty days and forty nights you were fasting in the wild. Forty days and forty nights tempted and yet undefiled. Shall not we your sorrow share and from worldly joys abstain? Fasting with unceasing prayer strong with you to suffer pain. Then if Satan on us press, flesh or spirit to assail, victor in the wilderness, grant that we not faint nor fail. So shall we have peace divine, holier gladness ours shall be. Round us too shall angels shine, such as served you faithfully. Keep Oh, keep us, Saviour dear, ever constant by your side, that with you we may appear at the eternal Easter.
tide. Brothers and sisters, Lent is a time when we get to reset, when we get to enter into the story of Jesus to allow our lives to be shaped more and more like the one whom we're trying to follow. And the Lenten season, of course, begins tonight, Ash Wednesday. And in particular, the act of the imposition of ashes, which we're about to do now, signifies a great deal. The ashes themselves are usually taken from palm branches that are used on Palm Sunday. And so they're connected to Easter, to the end of the journey. But what they're meant to remind us of is not simply our mortality, but our vulnerability. The ashes remind us of the openness and the vulnerability that we are called to have to our own pain, to the pain of others, to the pain of God in this world. But also mixed in with those ashes is oil. And oil has a very long history in the biblical text in reference to joy and gladness and blessing. And so tonight, as you are reminded of your mortality, your vulnerability, by hearing the words, you are dust, and to dust you will return, also hear the words of joy. Turn to God and rejoice in hope. Or repent and believe in the gospel. Andrew, beloved child of God, from dust you have come, and from dust you shall return. Jeff, you are a beloved child of God. From dust we have come, and the dust we shall return. I know it's a little strange this last Wednesday. The meeting house has no one in it. You're at home, maybe with family, maybe with friends, maybe by yourself. But it's Ash Wednesday. We're beginning the journey of Lent together. Ash Wednesday, as I've already shared, is so important as we remember what it means to take on the ash. And so, my friends, if you're there with family and friends with a little baby lotion, with, with a little olive oil, just anoint each other. From dust you have come and from dust you shall return. If you're by yourself, again, it'll feel a little weird. We're there with you in spirit. Bless yourself. Put the sign of the cross on. From dust you have come, from dust you shall return. But if you're willing, I would like to virtually anoint you. And so just lean towards whatever you're watching and let me anoint you. And then we leave this place, wherever you are. We leave this moment in silence, reflecting on what the journey of Lent is all about. So my friends... Blessed child of God, from dust you have come and from dust you shall return. Turn away from your sin and believe the good news. Amen.